Andre Palladio discusses seven different proportions in his treatise on architecture, the four books on architecture. His first proportion is the square, a one-to-one -one ratio. Palladio also promoted the circle in designing floor plans. This in conjunction with the square was one of his typical designs. The next proportion promoted by Palladio was called the diagonal of the square. This is where you take the diagonal of that same square shape and pull the arc down. And that creates a proportion a length to width proportion. Next, we have what Palladio considered a square and a third. We take our original square and divide it into three sections and add one of those sections to the length, where again we've produced another length to width ratio. This ratio also creates a three to four ratio consistent with the musical ratios of Pythagoras. Next we have a square and a half. Take the same original square, divide it in half, and apply that half to the other length. This gives you a two to three ratio. Again, consistent with the musical ratios. Here we have a square and two thirds. We'll take a third from our square and a third and add two thirds to the length of this square. This yields a three to five ratio. Next, we have what Palladio called a double square. This is two squares stacked on top of each other. This is obviously a one to two ratio, another musical scale. These are the seven proportions that Palladio considered ideal for room sizes. Several methods for determining the height of rooms. Um, Ching notes one, the height of the room with a flat ceiling would be equal to the width. The height of a room with vaulted ceilings would be one third greater than the width. So a square room with a vaulted ceiling the ceiling would be the width of the room plus one third. That determines the height of the room. Lodio used several different complex methods for determining room heights. One was called the mean proportional, or it's called the geometric mean that we discussed earlier in video two. To apply this, you would simply take, you would take the two length, you would take the two lengths, the one, 
the width this being the width and the length and simply add the two together oh then you add the two together find the center draw a semicircle and then this length gives you the mean proportional geometrically without the use of mathematics. Or numbers, for that matter. His other instance was to use the harmonic mean. And in order to get the harmonic mean for this size room, first you have to find the arithmetic mean, which again is the length plus the width and divided right down the middle or bisected right down the middle. Once you have that arithmetic mean you can then apply those two dimensions to create a rectangle. That rectangle is applied on the left then you draw the diagonal through that corner and the rectangle created is the roof height for the square and a half size room. Obviously these methods are quite complex and one might even say convoluted. Many sources cite this process for determining the arithmetic, geometric, and harmonic means. Typically, they are described in a text form in one long run-on sentence, I might add, with no geometric explanation. And they all typically come from Theon of Smyrna from the third century AD. The arithmetic mean, the mean term, is greater than one extreme and less than the other by the same number. In the geometric mean, the mean term is greater than one extreme and is less than the other by a multiple or super partial ratio of the first term to the second or of the second to the third. The harmonic mean, the mean term is greater than one extreme and is less than the other by the same part of the extreme. Alternatively, in modern design books, the algebraic method is used to describe these. Several of Palladio's work still exist today, and scholars debate on how they were actually designed. Many of Palladio's original drawings still exist today. The drawings for the Villa Emo do not match the building that was actually built and it still exists today. Many scholars have measured the building using different methods. Some scholars claim that the building closely matches the Pythagorean musical proportions. However, others argue that it matched that it fits a strict three four five Pythagorean ratio, and still others ex can argue that it matches the golden ratio. It's interesting that all these measurements can match other proportioning systems, everything except his drawings. It's speculated that this has something to do with the wall thicknesses.
that either his proportional systems did not account for the wall systems, or were they inside the room or outside the room, or did the builders build the wall thicknesses differently than the plans, or did they build the building just completely different than the plans using their own systems? I would imagine that's what happened because I don't think they're figuring out that arithmetic mean and geometric mean on the job site. However, the concepts proposed by Palladio for the seven ideal room proportions is an interesting concept. The architects and builders of 19th century America adopted this idea, particularly for door and window and fireplace and, and molding designs. And it's the process we will use for this exercise. Regardless of the complexities of Palladio's proportioning systems, his structures and ideology still fit into this project. Ching includes a quote from Palladio that demonstrates this. Beauty will result from the form and correspondence of the whole with respect to the several parts of the parts with regard to each other and of these again to the whole that the structure may appear an entire and complete body wherein each member agrees with the other and all necessary to compose what you intend to form. This is essentially the same thing as the whole is to the parts as the parts is to the whole. And this is what achieves harmony in a design. Ching's example of a Palladio floor plan is a typical design by Andre Palladio. The circle with a square around it, or the square with a circle around it, he typically always began his designs with those two relationships and those two proportions, and the rest of his proportions worked out from there. Begin with a circle to establish some type of Palladian type design. Use a one to one square. Use the diagonal of a square proportion. Use the three to four ratio or a square and a third. Use the two to three ratio or a square and a half. Use a square and two thirds. which is a three to five ratio.
and the double square, a one to two ratio.